Access more. Someone texted on her phone, hey, we're in town. Can we swing by? Her husband sees it. He says to her, hey, you know, Karen said they're, they're in town and it's okay if they come by. And she goes, oh, that'd be great. I'd love to see them. He texts back, sure, period. <laughs> You did get a snort. You did get a snort. Welcome to the Candace Cameron Bray podcast. We're here to share conversations about life's challenges, celebrations, and everything in between. Season two is about finding purpose. Come join us. Before we jump in, I want you to know Access More is the preferred place to listen to and watch my podcast. At accessmore.com, you can find other great faith-based podcasts on audio and video. Just go to accessmore.com. Hello, everyone. It's Candice and Heather. How are you today? I'm good. It's so fun to do this with you. I agree. I'm, in, I'm loving our conversations. Yeah, it's really fun. And I love that what we get to talk about today. Yeah. Tell everyone. Um, We're talking about your wiring, Mm. how God made you, your gifts and your talents. And I know people assume because you've been in the entertainment industry, they know you're talented, but like, I think it'd be interesting to talk a little bit about how you are wired. And I know you've done strength finders or what they now call Clifton strengths. My husband's a coach, so I'm a Uh big fan. Okay. So tell me your top five strengths. Okay, I did take this strength finder. <laughs> it's hard to <laughs> say. It's a tongue twister. Yeah, that's why they think they changed it to it. Clifton Strengths. Yeah. Got it. Uh, yeah, all the employees took it here so we can, I guess, better learn how to better work together yeah. and what our strengths and weaknesses are. So I don't, I don't know a lot of this, but here were my top five strengths. Okay. They were relator. Yeah. Futuristic. Maximizer connectedness and positivity. And I read those because I'm familiar and I'm like, of course that's you. Of course that's you. Okay. Because this I doesn't think mean of, anything to me. So well, like, tell me, tell me. <laughs> I mean, number one, being you're a relator means you love the connected relationship with a person. Like you're not trying to woo the world, mm-hmm. even as a performer, that's mm-hmm. where you would love to get to know each individual person. Yeah. More than yeah. just the big crowd. And then futuristic- Great. You're an entrepreneur. I mean, oh, you are yeah. always strategizing. I'm always thinking in the future. Yes. Yeah, that makes sense. And you're a maximizer. You do everything <laughs> as best do. as you can. That dishwasher is probably going to be loaded so efficiently. <gasps> yeah, I rarely allow anyone else to load the dishwasher <laughs> because I maximize that you, space. That is crazy that you just pulled out the dishwasher analogy because I'm like, wait, what? I am married Even to my a maximizer. Best friend, yeah, she comes over and she's like, I know not to touch your dishwasher because I know you're just going to rearrange it. And I'm like, it's only because I can get more, more things in there. Yeah. I can maximize. I, learning this about my husband, it was one of the marriage <laughs> savers because it was personally offending to me to load it and have him reload it. I thought, does he That's just think so I'm funny. bad at this? And then I realized, no, he is a maximizer. So that's <laughs> okay. you. And I've spent the day, you, you know, are maximizing all of this. Do you know what you are in strength well, finders? let's finish. Okay. Connectedness. You're always connecting ideas and God's word to your yeah. life and people like, and I have connectedness. That is one of my top five. I would imagine. So I love, so that's why we're like, yes, yes, this is all cool. Right. How this all fits together. And positivity. I mean, be yeah, kind. Come I, on. <laughs> Fruits of the spirit all over. Yes. I, I'm, I'm glad. I, I am a positive person. Yeah. I get asked that all the time. Like, how are you such a positive person? And sometimes I, I just feel like God gave me a spirit of positivity. I've always been a glass half full kind of gal for my whole life. Yeah. And it's wired into you. Yes. It's wired. There you go. And that's what we're talking about, being it wired. Okay, wired. it all makes sense. It is wired into okay, you. Okay, but so, can you change how you're wired? Like right? if I'm wired positively, what if you're wired negatively? Can you change that? Right. Is that well, what thankful- we're going to be talking about? <laughs> Thankfully, it's called strength, you know, finders. So they're focusing on the strengths, right? There's <laughs> okay. not a negativity strength. But I do think it's important when I'm someone who's maybe not wired with positivity in my top five to not feel less than because that's hard for me. And also I think it's really important to know what your strengths are so that you put energy into maximizing what you're Mm -hmm. good at those strengths instead of focusing on what 
maybe are your weaknesses and not putting energy into them. So they're, they're wired into you. Yeah. God made you that way. They're not necessarily changing, but through the power of the Holy spirit, through growth, through Mm -hmm. maturity, you're refining them and the rough edges get kind of smoothed out, you know? Yeah, that makes sense. That's great. I I also, I'm side noting that we took that approach in parenting with our kids, particularly with school to build upon their strengths and Mm -hmm. not focus as much on the weaknesses. So we were like, you know, if math isn't your subject, we, we, we still need you to know it, but the basics, but we're not it's okay. If you're just passing the class, yeah. we're good with that yeah. because your strength lies in science or it lies oh. in uh, musicality. And let's, let's play into and build those strengths more than we focus on getting that lower grade up to an A when it's just not how you're wired. And your kids are very lucky to have you. You know, <laughs> thank, because thank you. I, I know think, not all parents agree with that, but that's well, how we chose to raise our kids. A lot of what we're going to talk about today is some of these strengths getting mislabeled mm-hmm. or, you know, not owned mm-hmm. by us as adults because they were missed as kids. Like what age do you feel like you started noticing specific gifts and talents in your kids? Like how old do you feel like they were? Well, you know, like you see them yeah. playing at two and three. Uh, oh, Sure. Yeah. I mean, I remember when Lev Le was, Le was four <laughs> and it was the first year I tried homeschooling, which didn't. Bless your it, heart. Yeah. Bless my heart. <laughs> it didn't last. Yeah. Um, and I have great homeschooling oh, people I did, around me. I was homeschooled, me. I tell y'all. Yeah. And okay. my sister homeschools her five kids, my brother and his wife, they homeschooled their six kids. So I had great reinforcements, but learned very quickly. It just wasn't for me. Mm-hmm. But Lev, we had worked on the alphabet and sounds and letters and I said, okay, let's read a book together. I'll start reading. And he goes, no, mommy, I'm going to read. And I said, but you don't know how to read yet. So I'll read, but we'll sound out the words together. And he goes, no, I'm going to read. And he grabbed the book for me and he started reading, Stop. literally reading with inflection, like could not even sounding out the words just, and I was like, oh, this is a smart, this is a smart one. <laughs> so, and wow. Lev's been that diligent straight A student, never helped him with a piece of homework in his life, but like immediately recognized like he has a mm. talent and a, a studying skill set that is, that is yeah. different. That's excellent. Um, and of course I could, I mean, I can talk about my kids all day long and tell yeah. you Max's talents and Natasha's talents, but yeah, recognize them all at a very young age. Yeah. I heard a seminary professor say once that if you want to know what area of ministry to go into, consider what you enjoyed doing when you were little. That's why Natasha's an actress, because she was so full of drama. That was her ministry. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry, Natasha, I love you. I love you. I love you. I have a funny story. We were at, um, for the last 10 summers, we've gone to family camp. It's Uh one of our joys as a family that was an accidental falling into, but just love it. And we were there a couple of years ago and there's always a talent show night. And this counselor was up there and she said, does anybody know how to beatbox? Which Mm -hmm. I knew my youngest actually is a fantastic beatboxer. But before he could volunteer, I saw the little boy in front of me shoot his hand up. He was like ready to go. I can beatbox. Gets on stage. And instead of grabbing the mic, he pulls up his knees (laughs) and he curls up into a like a ball. Okay. And we're all looking at each other like, what's going on? His mom is very confused. She was first confused that he thought he could beatbox. And second, what in the world are you doing on stage? He thought she said, be a box. Does (laughs) anyone know how to be a box? And he's like, boxness? I I am your guy. I can be a box. I'm ready for talent show night (laughs) because that is what I am all about. And she's, she's dying laughing. I'm laughing. And I thought, I love his just enthusiasm yeah. over owning that. Yeah. That I think we lose over time. Mm-hmm. Right. Yep. You know, do you, is there <laughs> that any, is so cute. Right? Is there anything that you've ever struggled to like own? You're really good at it, but maybe it's. <sighs> Maybe I a secret wish, talent I that wish you could I could share with us. <laughs> I wish I could tell you that singing was my hidden talent. Yeah. No, no, it's not. I really want it to be. Does that count? I wish I was I, this great no, no. singer, but I'm not. And I will always live vicariously through my daughter, Natasha, because she has a beautiful voice. Oh, I love it. I make her sit next to me in church because I'm like, please just sing more. I love hearing her voice. Um, no, I feel like I'm, I'm like, uh, 
A one hit wonder. I, I have no extra hidden talents. You have shown us I've all of, of your talents, okay. all of my talents, but there, there isn't anything that I, that I can think of that's hidden. Yeah. What about you? Well, I did do synchronized swimming. Ooh. There's that. <laughs> Somebody Was it to Jesus music in too? The, cast, in the production team. <laughs> they did. <laughs> um, was it what? I said, was it to Jesus music no, too? No, it was not. A, <laughs> you know, it was the Indianapolis Synchronettes. Okay. okay this was I a, love synchronized swimming, by the way. I think it's so cool. Thank you. <laughs> oh, people are still laughing. I love it. Do you know how, well, it's you know hard. how hard it is. It is the hardest thing I've ever like, done. Like, I don't even understand how water polo players play water polo because the of- leg motion yes, that you have to do underwater. and then you think of synchronized swimming and holding yeah. your breath and mm -hmm. flips and the turns mm -hmm. and propelling yourself up and your legs and pointed toes and all the things. And holding your breath for minutes. Yes. Minutes while you're doing all that. Nobody's laughing at synchronized swimming. Nobody over there. Hey, now. We did put <laughs> jello in our hair before every performance. So there's that. So it would stick. So it would stick. Yeah. You put it in a bun and then you'd put non-flavored jello in your hair. <gasps> wow. Serious You're stuff here. So much. This is serious talent. Okay. <laughs> Something I was born with. <laughs> no. But there were things that were a part of me that I think I was embarrassed about mm -hmm. growing up that were kind of labeled as a problem in my family that I've come to own as a gift now. Mm -hmm. One being I was too sensitive, particularly mm. like even physically too sensitive. I would cut all the tags out of yep. my clothes, footed pajamas. Who invented those? Those are the worst to cut them. They're sweaty, your sweaty <laughs> feet. Did you have footed pajamas? I did have footed and pajamas. you were fine, but I I was, was fine, not. but I don't think I've worn them since I was five. So it's not like no, I really enjoyed them. No, it's not a trend them. that you should no. stick with. But my, I had older siblings, right? My sister's 16 mm -hmm. when I was born. So she was often married by the time right. I was five. And then I have an older brother. And so they're always telling me about my childhood and that I cried all the time. Like I just cried about everything. Mm -hmm. And that I was too sensitive. And I was like, this is not... <laughs> this is not something I want to be. Right. But I've come as an adult to see that's how God made me. And I can connect with people and empathize with them. Mm -hmm. You can sit with people I in their pain people. and grief, can't you? Yeah. And I'm totally fine with that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's a gift. Yeah. Have you had something mislabeled for you? Like something that in your childhood, it was a problem, but now you're seeing, oh, that was actually this strength that went awry. Like, were you too, like, I'm trying to look at your strengths. I know. Were I, you, um, in I, your maximizing, was that a problem or thinking about the future? Did your parents ever say, Candace, stop talking about the future. We're going to do this right now. <laughs> I feel like that's me today. <laughs> I'm having, I feel like I've blocked out my childhood in that way. No, oh, okay. I, I had a great childhood, but I, again, and I mentioned this in a, in a previous episode, but I feel like it, not so much as a child, but maybe a teenager, but you know, we all go through weird things as a teenager, but I feel like if I had to have been, if I was mislabeled at all, it was by outsiders, mm. not my family. Right. Okay. And it was outsiders thinking I was arrogant or snobby because I was expected to be outgoing all of the time because I was in entertainment. Mm -hmm. And I, I am fine being the person in the corner of the room mm. and people watching. Yeah. And but people, the, but, but people, that, assume, people assume like, oh, she's too good to talk to us. Mm -hmm. She didn't come over and say hi. Well, and they probably think because when you're on camera, you're. Right. You're just outgoing. outgoing. You're hosting yeah. that you're always the host of the party. Uh, I've since I, I am much more outgoing now. But as a teenager, even in my, and particularly in my twenties, I just, I wanted to retreat around yeah. people and that wasn't their expectation. So that, that was the mislabeling I've felt over yeah. the years. Well, and there's a complicating factor of like people knowing you yeah, and maybe you not wanting to be known. Yeah. There's a lot more to your story yeah. than just yeah. the average Joe. I think too, we talked about string finders are like, there's other personality tests, but we read in scripture, another way we're wired is spiritually. Mm -hmm. So for me, like with that overly sensitive skin, and this is going to be crazy, Candice. Are you ready for crazy? <laughs> Are you ready for we're, crazy? We're already crazy. Okay. Yeah, I'm ready for crazy. Um, when I like really learned more about the Holy Spirit and had like a moment in prayer with the Holy Spirit, 
God kind of showed up for me on my skin. Like my <sighs> arms got warm. Really? I'm not joking. And it was this moment of clarity of, oh my goodness, this thing that has been mislabeled and a problem is actually the place that God shows himself to me on my skin. We all have very full lives. And for me, a good day is always better when it starts with a great night's sleep. You can wake up feeling refreshed and rested with the softest sheets from Bowl & Branch. I love having Bowl & Branch sheets because compared to so many other sheets I've tried, you can feel the quality immediately. They're silky soft and even get softer with every wash. They look amazing, but I really love how they feel. If you think about how much time in your life you spend sleeping, it's worth it to make sure your sheets are the best. You'll feel the difference immediately because the quality is unlike anything else. Bolin Branch signature sheets come in 10 versatile colors in all sizes from twin up to California king. And they're designed to feel incredible no matter whether you sleep hot or sleep cold. They feel buttery to the touch and are super breathable. They are perfect for cooler and warmer weather. Sleep better at night with Bolin Branch sheets. Get 15% off your first order when you use promo code CANDICE at BolinBranch.com. That's Bowl and Branch, B-O-L-L-A-N-D, Branch.com. Promo code CANDICE. Exclusions apply. See site for details. I can't imagine that. I dream of that. To, of hearing from God and I in have that friends. way or, fe- or feeling God. I, I have friends who have experienced yeah. those things. I, I have seen God work in great ways in my life, but I haven't, I don't have stories of like physically feeling him yeah. or, or, or physically hearing him, yeah. you know. Or friends that are the ones who are great at home decor, the fashion. Mm-hmm. I've been amazed at how they can see really clearly with God or he sh- yeah. gives them pictures or, you know, right, right. vivid things. And yeah. I'm like, that's how they're wired. And then in scripture, we read all these different spiritual gifts, like exhortation, encouragement, hospitality, which, I mean, we're all called to be hospitable, mm-hmm. like we talked about mm-hmm. in the last episode, but be like Debbie, <laughs> not like Candace. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> but just, there are people who are really, truly given a gift through the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And mm-hmm. as I was working through the spiritual gifts and writing about them, it was hard to type out the sentence where I had to tell people, these are my spiritual gifts. Cause it was kind of like, felt like tooting my own horn. Okay. But then I realized these are spiritual gifts. They're not from me. Right. So it's okay to brag about them. Yeah. Because God oh, I, gave I them to that. me. Mm-hmm. Have so you done what a, are your spiritual gifts? Teaching. Mm-hmm. wisdom, encouragement, or exhortation. I think of, and faith. For some reason, I yeah. Well, I see have, that in all of our conversations <laughs> that we're having. It's, but it's God. It, yeah. So have you ever done a, like a spiritual gifts test or studied that? Or do you know offhand? Like, No, I haven't. Yeah. I haven't done it. One of my, my boys has done it and it was very, very interesting. And I want to do one, but okay. I haven't yet. Okay. It's on the list. Okay. I, we can put a link in the show gift. notes. I, <laughs> yeah, I know for spiritual a, gifts. I know of a spiritual gift quiz we can put in the show notes. But yeah, part of, I think, even in your reaction to that, like I want to, mm-hmm. is I think there was a moment when someone told me, they looked at me and they said, I don't really know what yours are. And I felt like I missed the day where God was handing out spiritual gifts. Like a person said in conversation to you, I don't yeah. know what yours are. A family are. member was like, I'm as, not sure what your spiritual gifts are as if I didn't possess anything good. <laughs> have any. Wow. Yeah. That's harsh. Yeah. That's but, harsh D. Yeah. <laughs> <That's> harsh D. <laughs> <laughs> well, there are times when we may know them, mm-hmm. but we're not having a place to use them. Mm-hmm. Kind of like we've talked about seasons of waiting, but there can be moments when you feel like God's not asking you to activate them. Like you're not given opportunity to use them and you feel kind of invaluable, like not valued by yeah. God. My son was on a basketball team mm-hmm. a couple of years ago and they made it to the playoffs for the final game. Mm-hmm. And he'd been playing throughout the season. Like there were only eight people on the team. So he was playing yep. every game. Well, the final game, he sat on the bench oh. the whole game. Until the last two seconds when the coach said, I'm just going to put you in so you can't say you didn't play. That's like even worse. 
and they're all cheering when they won the game and they're holding the trophy. And he, I can tell he is not feeling it. Of course. He gets in the car. He is bawling. Yep. He's super upset. Yep. I'm trying to convince him to go to celebration dinner. He's, he's thinking, yep. I wasn't a part of this victory. Yep. And I think that's how we feel. Yeah. And God's yeah. going to win in the end. FYI. Mm-hmm. Spoiler. Yep. But we can feel like we're sitting on the bench in his kingdom work and he's not calling us to play in the game. Yeah. You know, have you ever felt benched or know someone who has? Well, I mean, I've seen this with my kids in sports also. Both my boys played hockey growing up until college. Um, You know, I have felt, I've felt like that at times in my life. But, you know, the immediate person I think about who has a a really beautiful story is my sister, Bridget. Mm. Bridget is the oldest of us three girls. And then my brother's the oldest. So- my brother, and then Bridget, Melissa, then me, I'm the baby. And Bridget has a really beautiful testimony that, um, by the way, if you want to hear it, you could go follow her on Instagram or, you know, something. But when we started acting in the business, I was five, my brother was nine, but we all, all four of us kids went to the agent. Oh. And of all four of us, Bridget was the most outgoing. Hmm. Bridget was also a cheerleader on drill team, like her whole life, loved to dance, like just loved to perform, was really funny. So when we went to this agent, we thought for sure Bridget was going to be acting, like she was going to take her no brainer, then let's see about the three of us. And the agent took my brother, my sister, Melissa, and me, and not Bridget. And Bridget wanted to be a performer her whole life. Mm. And while, and for specific reasons, she wasn't picked. Mm. And throughout her life, as she then graduated high school and went into college, it still never happened for her. Mm. And she dreamed about it. She went on to get married and she has three beautiful children. You know, she's... She's older than I am now, but it wasn't really until recently that she had this revelation from God um, because she almost died in a, in a car accident, her, her and her whole family. Wow. And in processing her life, she really had to go back because of gratitude, like we're still alive. It just changed yeah. her s- perspective on life to have had that, that, um, like beat to confront death that closely. And when she went back, she realized I, I wasn't benched. Mm -hmm. Like God used my life differently than I wanted it and that I expected it. And when she actually went back in detail, she goes, you know what, but I, but I did perform and I did get to be a part of this business that I wanted to be a part of, which was entertainment. She was just a part of it in a different capacity. And, but my heart always thinks of her first because we all thought she would be the one Mm -hmm. and she got benched and it never came to her. But in a different way, it did. And she can look back and just see all the work that God did in her life and to see who she is today. And she doesn't have those feelings of feeling left out anymore. Yeah. And I told my son that day, I said, maybe the space God was asking you to occupy was to cheer on your friends. Mm -hmm. That was your role that, Mm -hmm. that for that game. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't mean you weren't part of the victory. You just weren't actually playing like you thought, but yeah, that perspective of like, it may not look like what we think. Right. And releasing that, how he uses our And it's hard to do that. It's hard to do that sometimes when you want something so badly and it's like, yeah, um, that's, it's not for you. And it's so cool to see how we each get to have this journey with God, mm-hmm. but like we, it all weaves together. Yeah. It, but it's, <laughs> I'll say it again. It is so important to stick with our wiring and be us and not try to be someone else. You know what I mean? Yep. Have you ever had seasons where you're like, I'm going to try to be more this, or I'm going to try to, of course, I'm going to try perm tear. No, I'm just kidding. Like, yeah, well like, done that too. But I'm yeah, you gonna, see other yeah. people and you're like, I want to do it like they're doing. I want to be like them. Yes. They seem to do that. And you give it a go and you're like, this and just backfires. isn't me. No, it just doesn't work. I have a funny story. Okay. 
So we have really good friends, husband, wife. They've given me permission to share the story. Um, And they're very different. They're wired so differently. And yet- The the two of them? The two of them are wired wired differently differently from each other. Got it. And there were a couple times where they've texted for the other one. So one time she was getting ready to have people over uh, or she was getting ready or something. And someone texted on her phone, Hey, we're in town. Can we swing by? Her husband sees it. He says to her, Hey, you know, Karen said they're, they're in town and it's okay if they come by. And she goes, Oh, that'd be great. I'd love to see them. He texts back. Sure. Period. <laughs> Your snort. Yes. You did get a snort. You get a snort. Oh, yeah. that would hurt. Like that hurts me already. This so this is an out-of-town friend who's in town. She gets a response. Sure. Sure. <laughs> so she's replied. She's like, well, if you guys are busy, it's no problem. We don't have to come. No, it's fine. It's his response back. So she shows up, and my girlfriend is like feeling like Karen is acting a little off, like something's wrong. And she said, Are you okay? Is everything okay? She's like, Well, when you texted, I couldn't, it seemed like you really didn't want us to come. She goes, what? No, I really did. She looks at the text. She looks at her husband. She's like, what? What did you do? Period. Okay. Other story. They're in the car driving. (laughs) Husband's driving. He gets a text from someone saying, Hey dude, loved your boots. You wore the other day. Where'd you get them? What kind are they? Where'd you get them? She's like, Oh, tell them they're Ariat and they're from, I don't know. Let's pick a place. Dick's Sporting Goods or something. Okay. And so she replies, new boots, how fun, exclamation point. (laughs) And then she says the name of the boots and where to get them. And this husband sees the friend at church, you know, the next day or something. He's like, were you making fun of me for wanting these boots? No, it's her enthusiasm, his lack of, you can't. You can't do it. No, you can't Be do it. You. <laughs> Otherwise, you're disrupting relationships. Especially in text messages. Especially. Or which like, are never clear anyway. No, no. And in the Bible, we have the example of David. Mm-hmm. Like he has spent all these years as a shepherd. So he's getting all this experience and he's coming in. He sees Goliath and he's like, God is telling me to fight him. But Saul says, well, you need this armor. Mm-hmm. So he gives him his armor. And he's like, I can't even walk around in this. Right. Like, I can't even move yep. in this. This is not for me. Yep. This doesn't fit. He recognized like his giftings were with the slingshot without all the armor. And he had success in doing that. And a guy, a pastor, Pete Scazzaro, is that how you think you say it? I don't know. Not sure. He commented, he said, David knows himself. He knows the living God who made the heavens and the earth. And with that alone, David is able to break through the barriers of his family's negative views of who he is, the discouragement of Saul, an entire army living in fear and the curses of Goliath. Like none of that could hold back who he knows God made him to be Mm -hmm. in that moment. Mm -hmm. You know, have you ever felt like that? That's such a great example of David. Can you relate to that aspect of David, like taking on the Goliath? (laughs) And uh, I, 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 I feel like wiring. that. And I, again, I know I, I shared this in some earlier episodes, but when my dad had told me not to be in the entertainment industry, that that it, sh- it wasn't for me anymore. I had, I am, I am wired with such a drive. I am a very motivated person, which is yeah. why I'm an entrepreneur, which yeah. is why I have my hand in so many different things. I like that. And that, that was so hard for someone to see me. Like I couldn't, shouldn't do that. And I, I kept saying like, no, but this is what I, so I made, this just, is what I meant to do. It's, what, it's how I made. It's mm-hmm. not just a determination, but it's, it's, I'm wired this way. Yeah. And ultimately it fueled me. Yeah. That ultimately fueled me. So when I when I got that opportunity to come back and work again and establish myself, I clearly came back with a vengeance. <laughs> <You're> <laughs> Not like, a vengeance, that. but I was like, yeah. I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it 10 times bigger than any of me thought I was going to do. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, that's good. That's good. Yeah. But had to do it, had to do it my way mm-hmm. in the, in terms of how I was wired. Like, I feel like if I had just said, okay, I'm going to just, I'll be a stay-at-home mom or a wife, which are beautiful, wonderful things. Let me tell you. And and I have friends that that is, that is their their place. That's their assignment full time. 
But if I, but if I just came to that place and said, that's what I'm going to do. And I'm not going to fulfill this other side that's driven to share things with people or connect and relate, connect and relate. I I would be half the person I am Mm -hmm. inside emotionally. Well, and I think it shows our kids, this is my view, is if I'm not showing my kids that I use my gifts empowered by God where I am, then I'm not motivating them to do the same. Mm -hmm. If I'm saying, oh, all my energy and time, because this can be true whether you stay home full time or you work outside the home. If you aren't using your gifts somewhere Mm -hmm. empowered by God or you're wiring, you don't have people in your home and you're not encouraging them. You're not teaching from your living, like you're not using your gifts somewhere. You've communicated to your children that, that that's, that's the option. But when you use them, they can see, wow, I can do that too. Right. My mom loves teaching the Bible. My mom loves encouraging people. What Mm -hmm. are my gifts? How could I use them empowered by God to serve other people? Yep. That's great. That's a good word. Okay. Uh, Is that it? That's it. Time for a little listener question. I can't believe it. I can't believe it. So let's see. We have, oh, this person wants to be anonymous. Oh, okay. So they have said, I'm wondering if praying before every meal is something the Bible asks us to do. Sometimes it can feel awkward when you're out to lunch or dinner with someone at their house or if they're at your house. I just want to hear your view on this. Well, that's a really great question. Uh, I love that question. And I don't believe there's anywhere in the Bible that specifically says you have to pray before meals. I think as part of Jewish culture prayer was in a part of like Shabbat every week. Okay. But G- in Jesus is the letters in red. Like he never specifically said, he I didn't don't say think pray before meals, but he did it. Right. He would right. bless the bread and the okay. wine before. Yeah. Um, I, I think for me, it's, it's really a heart posture yeah. and, and praying before meals is a time and a place where I am stopping in my day. Mm-hmm. So it's like, I relate it to this automatic pause. I'm stopping to eat my meal. So this is just a, a time that I can give thanks to God. Yeah. And that's what I, that's how I see it. I yeah. don't see it as an obligation that I have to, but it makes me feel better to practice gratitude and thankfulness towards God of what he's given me. And sometimes it's a just a pause in my day to reflect. Um, as far as praying when you're out in public or at meals, Sometimes I do and sometimes I don't. Right. There, I don't have like I have to or I'm mm-hmm. a bad Christian if I don't pray before my meal. No. Um, and I kind of read the room. <laughs> so if I'm if I am at a business meeting and I'm sitting with 10 other executives and we're having a lunch at the table, listen, if I if I feel that I need to pray silently, I certainly will. But if I also feel uncomfortable, like this might make someone else a little uncomfortable. I just yeah. I don't know these people well enough or something and I don't want it to feel weird, then I just won't. But I'm, yeah. I know I'm praying throughout the day. So I feel confident yeah. in that. Um, and I'll also say that the Bible also talks about not making prayer a show for right. others. Right. So if you're doing it out of obligation to show how religious you are, <laughs> right. your motives probably aren't yeah. in the right place. I like all the things, right? We can yeah. do things in one heart posture and another, mm-hmm. you know, like the, the widow's might she gave what she had. It wasn't this grand showing, but it was a huge sacrifice for her. And so, yeah, I think it's all about the posture and acknowledging in that humble place of God's sovereignty Mm -hmm. and his provision and his Mm -hmm. character in that. And, you know, I love that you said gratitude. Like I was with someone, they said before they eat, they just say out loud their gratitude. Mm -hmm. And I think that's fantastic. I heard my husband was um, with someone and the guy he was eating with, when the waiter came up to the table, Mm -hmm. he said, we're about to pray. Is there anything we can pray for you? That's so cool. And I'm sure there are going to be people that are offended. And I'm sure there are going to be people who say, no, I'm good. Yeah. But I bet there's more people that are who doesn't want to take and like, oh oh my gosh, thank you. Just seeing me. Like you're seeing, acknowledging I'm a human being who might have something going on. who might need prayer. Yep. That I I love that. I think that's. That's really An special. I'll option. also say one last thing about prayer yeah. because especially when there's a beef going on at home, whether it's oh. with the kids or my husband or something, we know we pray before meals. Like we just always do at home. And so when there's a little tension in the air, it uh, automatically just 
humbles the room. Yeah. And sometimes <laughs> you, you're a little angry, like, oh, I don't want to pray because then I have to come in humility. Yeah. And But it really does change your heart posture yeah. and it can change the mood and then the dynamic for the whole rest of the evening. And sometimes I need that kick in the butt. <laughs> yeah, it's a good it's a good rhythm to have. Yeah. yeah. Well, there is a link at Candice.com where you can order Heather's new book, Right Where You Belong. But we also have something really special for you. It's a free PDF with tips to help you discover your experiences, gifts, and even challenges in your life that fit all together. So go to Candice.com to download it. And no matter what season of life you're in, we hope this will help you discover your next step. Until next time, be grateful all day, every day. This has been a Candace Cameron Bure podcast, a production of Candy Rock Entertainment. Some of the products and services mentioned are paid promotions. Any advice should be confirmed with a qualified professional. Opinions and ideas are for entertainment purposes only and belong to Candy Rock Entertainment. All rights reserved.